terrific. Now, and for happy bank holiday Monday, please treat yourself to a big breakfast. You deserve it. Monday the 1st of May, May Day. Not only is it May Day, May Day, May Day, not only am I Johnny Vaughan, not only is this... Lisa Tarbuck, it's Dallas Day. It's Dallas Day. Dallas Day on Channel 4. It's Dallas Day on Channel 4, enjoy that, it's a great show. Hey, none are getting behind that more than us, are they? You're absolutely right. This is how we're going to start that Dallas Day with, of course, well, this is how the show's lining up and you can see, here we go. To start Dallas Day, what could be more Dallas-ish than Mark Bright? Uh, telling us what's going down Live from after Dallas. the big relegation games of the weekend. Mark Bright, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, and look, there's Eve the body Tibbles. Hey! Eve's looking terrific. Eve. I met Eve's sister on Friday, that's all I'm uh, saying. Maud. At, yeah, at 7.15, oily Richard Bacon Gladys. was out and about celebrating the pole dance for family viewing only on May Day. Oh, how about that? Pole dance. So, here's something for you. 7.20, Gail Porter is mixing it with DJ Luck and MC Meat. Yeah. That is a hell of a sandwich. Plus, we bring an air of Eurovision to the house with this year's song contest, Red Room, we stop it, representation for Germany. We have got Stefan Raab. Stefan Raab in the house. house. Uh, one of, actually, one of the, uh, reputed one of the funniest men in Germany. He's on this morning, on this morning show. We're talking about 8.16. Uh, we'll both do this bit separately uh, for the sake of the future. Okay. No, oh, sorry, that's the old script. Oh, right, that, that's good. That goes back to a time when there was a joke at the top of the show. Uh, right now, uh, uh, should we catch up with everything that's happening at ITM? <laughs> that's what it says there. Should we skip the news? Yeah. Skip it. Let's go on, let's go on to number read, eight. Do you know, I've read the news this morning. It's not that funny. <laughs> uh, here's Phil Gow. Here he is. Good morning. These are the main stories. This bank holiday Monday. Armoured cops create another ring of steel. Uh, Mum's back in town, but to a mixed reception. And rangers look forward to the half century. Hundreds of extra police are on duty in London to monitor May Day protests by anti-capitalists. It's hoped that the culmination of a weekend of peaceful protests won't be hijacked by renter mob thugs. Last year, 10,000 demonstrators hit the city, burning cars, smashing offices and battling with riot officers, leaving a two million pound trail of destruction. A fire at a factory storing chemicals on on Merseyside was brought under control last night. A hundred firefighters tackled the blaze in St. Helens, where nearby residents had been urged to seal their homes because of a huge pall of toxic smoke. Within 48 hours, the Midlands should learn the fate of thousands of Rover jobs thanks to a takeover of the company. Weekend talk had been of the Germans dumping all their UK plants. With alchemy out of the picture, the Phoenix Consortium is standing by. And TUC chief John Monks expects the government to offer help to a new owner, as it did to BMW. The government were prepared to give assistance to BMW when it was committed to Longbridge. And I'd hope that the same sort of order of support could be made available to a successful bidder. I hope it'll be Phoenix. I hope their, their talks will succeed on Tuesday. Madonna's returned from a trip to the States to a barrage of headlines. She's allegedly sacked her butler, giving him and his wife three days to get out. On top of that, she wants to spend more time in L.A., where she wants to have her second child. The father, British director Guy Ritchie, denies that that has cost their relationship. However, there is another man in her life, as she's asked Ali G to star in her next video. Here's the sport. So it's probably not worth betting on Rangers making it a 50th Scottish Championship next year. The odds wouldn't be worth it. Dodd set things rolling against Dundee, and McCann made it too as the champagne was taken from the fridge yesterday. And Rosenthal rounded off a 3-0 cruise before the Jurors received their 12th Championship trophy in 14 years. Lennox Lewis has invited Mike Tyson to come and get him following his successful defence of two world titles. But first up, Lewis is looking forward to his first fight in Britain for almost six years. He'll face South African Franz Berta in July. Here's the way the weather looks. Temperatures should range from 12 Celsius in Newcastle to 20 in Plymouth. Most areas will start bright. Uh, with any rogue showers clearing by midday. And this afternoon should stay dry, it's sunny and warm, with just a chance of rain over Northern Ireland. 
Here's a five-day forecast. Uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland will have a bright few days, turning cooler by Wednesday. Northern and central regions can also expect a dry week with plenty of bright spells. And the south will have warm sunshine, although it will be breezy and cooler on the southeast coast. Big Breakfast News 704. Here's Johnny. Thank you very much, Phil. Did you have a nice weekend, Philip? I had a great weekend. Thank you. Do you know, I saw your brother on television over Which the one? weekend. Oh, the little Michael? Yes. What was he, he doing? I don't know. He was on, he was on Open University. Uh, very late at night, it was just spinning round, and I was aware that it was your brother. How about that? Well, how about that? But he was, very, elo he, that? He was very eloquent indeed, Phil. I should hope so. He comes from, from Goodstock. Ah, oh, <laughs> Phil Gale, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. he's from Goodstock. <laughs> now, for any professional to receive an accolade uh, from their peers, from their fellow peers, all peers are fellow, aren't they? It's the highest mark of one's ability. Footballers, ladies and gentlemen, are no exception. And last night, we saw Roy Keane do the double and pick up the Professional Football Association's Players' Player, a Writer's Player of the Year awards. My next guest... <laughs> ..has regrettably never received that specific award, uh, but his teammates did once vote him... I don't think they did, did they? <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Brighty Bright! Yay! Yes, indeed, Brighty. Short, short and curly, bright and early. Uh, how are you this weekend? I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit, I said how are you this weekend. It's actually a Monday, isn't it? It is. Uh, but that's a sort of weekend. Been a heavy you have, one. Did you have a heavy weekend? I did. Cool, I did. Anyway, do you think Roy Keane, <laughs> as Footballer of the Year, was a good choice, Mark? Yes, I do. If I was still playing, I mean, I would have cast my vote for him or Kevin Phillips. Simply because yeah. Kevin Phillips... He's banged him in, hasn't yeah. he? Like 29 he he's on there. And, you know, he's on tried in top flight and he had a great season, but Keane's led United really well. You know, he's a good player. OK, let's move on from that. Uh, <laughs> he had a great season. He's shown his worth of money. I've got down on the card two points you made before, but not during the show. <laughs> now, Brighty, uh, what was the game to be at this weekend? Well, it was the, the bottom end of the league. Bradford City versus Wimbledon. <sighs> It was. I mean, um, it was a game Bradford had to win, and it was a game Wimbledon. Wimbledon could afford to draw because they got two other games, but they lost. They lost. Said eight straight well, losses in a row. They lost three they got, nil. Yeah, but I, spoke, I saw Jason Newell last night, and I spoke, to, and he said it didn't reflect the game. He said they were the better team. But what, with three nil. Yeah, that's what he, he said. He said that, that Bradford only had three chances. But that's what but football's all about. That's all you got to do. Correct. That's all it's about. It's about the points. It's and about, I no, it's about how many you got in the back of the net, Brighty. Not how many chances you've had. <laughs> the amount of frustrating afternoons I've had going, I think at the end of the day we were actually the better side, but we weren't because yeah. we didn't score, and that's all long the whole game's about. Long term, if you play the better football, that's what you want. But short term now, for them, it's about points. And they've lost eight straight, eight straight in a row now. Not only that, they had hearts and set, women uh, hearts played, and sent off yeah, a foul of the language. 40 minutes with 10 men. Um, but he was incensed because of a handball on the halfway line, which led to another goal. But it's um, but, but Bradford. Um, uh, they've come out. come out the come out the drop zone. First now, time this first year. Time, first time this year no, they've been out the relegation zone. Early so. season. From no, early season. First time this year Bradford out the relegation zone. So. I think you find that might be wrong then. Okay. Well, we only use you as the researcher, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, Evan Horridison forward. In the six-yard box is Clark. Misses it. It's got to be. But it isn't. What a miss. And Bigri has taken it. The somersault of joy. Bigri does well for Bradford. Decent effort. Great goal. Sullivan beaten on his near post. Bigri scores again. Bradford increased their lead to 2 0. Now, can they round things off in style here late on as Windass gets himself into a shooting position? Sullivan had to go down to save. Oh, that's a brilliant finish. Yeah. How about that? What a day for Bradford fans, though. Yeah. Uh, what Didn't else caught your eye this weekend? Down at the bridge. Oh, Chelsea. the Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> Pulling a stop to Liverpool. Yes, I didn't check the papers, but I gather they won. 2-0 <laughs> beat Liverpool, I think, um, after last week's defeat at Manchester United. I think Luca was very unhappy. Made six changes, but it seems to have... And he blasted the players, saying he wants to know which ones, obviously, not literally, want to die for the club. And there's a lot of rumours down at the bridge, man. Like, there like, is. In the Sunday Mirror, Dan I read Petrescu, that Viali says he's going to go and... and yeah, uh, I don't think so. I think, you know, he's... Do you think if they don't get into the European, if they don't make that top three and they don't make the European Champions League, do you think uh, Chelsea will face a mass exodus of its uh, foreign legion? It's, a, it's an ageing team. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ageing team. And I think... It's, it's, it's a what? Ageing team. I thought you said an Asian. <laughs> That's, That's a bit silly. odd. That's a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> it's an so he's, he's going to need to bring ch changes about. But I, I think the best route for, for Europe this year is through the uh, FA Cup. Because I just don't think, I think the, the three teams above them are going to stay where they are. It's who do, who do you think will be in the top three? I think it's going to be, oh, it's obviously Man United. 
I, I think far. Leeds. No, because Leeds are in your... Do you still think? I think they've got a few games in hand. Or I think they've got they one might, game, I think. They've got one game in hand still. Yeah. I think they're going to do it. I think it's going to be Leeds, Man U, Arsenal. I don't think Liverpool or Chelsea will actually get in there. Liverpool I'm saying will. That, no, I don't I, think they will. I think, I think you're wrong. Well, I think they do. No, I, think I think you're wrong. I think they will. I think you're wrong. I think they will. No, no, no. I, don't, I think you're wrong. I just think they will. I don't think you've studied the form, but I think they're wrong. You have a look at the table. Well, the, the form, Liverpool were. No, no. <laughs> Anyway, Until Chelsea did make such a... I've got to tell you, what it, I, I was at the bridge. I was privileged to be at, at uh, Stamford Bridge. Not only that, I was actually sitting next to a Liverpool fan, Sofa from Art, uh, which is even nicer experience. <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't even... You know, it's one of, the, one of the best performances they've had. For this. 20 minutes, the start of the game, I saw it wherever I go. Yeah. And it was a very... No, you were at the BBC, you to say. No, I was down at the BBC. I was watching the games come in. Yeah. And for the first 20 minutes, they were excellent. But George, we're playing. Oh, did you really say that well. with all your BBC mates? Oh, rather. Or did you leave around to Trevor and oh, say rather. that? Were you looking up to Trevor Brookie again? <laughs> no. Have they turned you in? Yeah, you sort of, sort of ball, sort of bubble up and down. You know, you sort of bubble, you sort of got hold of it. Uh, here's the um, top five goals, and I think we're going to get a live voiceover here from Mark Bright. So brace yourselves. He's got his special Motti mic, just like your BBC heroes, eh? <laughs> uh, here we go, and here's Mark Bright. This is live voiceover, gang. Arsenal's speedy winger Mark Overmars scored the only goal of the game and took the Gunners into second place on the table. Derby's Horatio Carbonari's wicked volley earned a point for the Rams and I think it's enough to see Jim Smith's team safe for this season. Goal three. <laughs> a short, short blast from Gianluca Vialli did the trick as the Blues romped over the Reds 2-0. Goal two. In a game Sheffield Wednesday just had to win, they lost 3-0. Michael Bridges with a clever curling shot. But at number one... At number one, his teammate, Young Player of the Year, Harry Kuehl, with a sublime oh, chip. Oh, what a lot. Leads his first win in six. Oh, that was as sweet as a nut. <laughs> I speak, of course, of your voice voiceover, but that was that was a very good goal. Excellent Lovely goal. Lovely. I love when they go in off the, off the, off the crossbar. Just looks Can't beat it. visually spectacular. Very Jeff first. Uh, do you know what? I think very Jeff first. Lovely reference, Brighty. You Thank brought you. that home, didn't you? Thank you. Uh, let's go to the pressure cooker where some people await our attention. At number three, Nicky Butt. midfielder. He, he looked, do you know what? I actually got quite annoyed about it. Incensed, him. wasn't it? He was so incensed yeah. and looked so over, petulant. Over I'm thinking, they won the championship. Yeah. There's still yeah. this competitive spirit left in the Man United squad. That's amazing. Which is quite right, but to a point. I mean, the, it was, he got sent off with Mika Hyde at the weekend and. He'll, he'll miss the start of next year, next season, and simply because of sort of getting himself sillily sent off. Good ploy. Thank you. Keep me talking. Okay. Uh, do you like it? It's a great play. Do you do that in great. interviews? It's yeah. a really good interview. Just want me to do it. Oh, no, it's a good trick. Just when, when you think the, the end, when you the, think the yeah. end of the question is happening, you take a step. They think, well, he's yeah. not going to talk now. Better carry on. Uh, number two, John Hartson. Why got yeah. John Hartson in there? I know. Look at his eyes, though. I'm sure if Linton was here, he'd say that. That's what, exactly what Linton would say. He'd be going, look at his eyes! <laughs> John Hartson, the Wimbledon striker, he's been out for three months with injury. And he comes back and they need him and he's got himself sent off. And he had a fight with Vinnie Jones. Well, apparently. Yeah. Reputedly. Reputedly, yeah. yeah. Over an argument, who was the hardest? hardest. <laughs> I think drink might have been yeah, involved yeah, with that as well. Normally, you can smell alcohol around that situation. Although, again, <laughs> Let's we're, go out we're just street. alleging that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that's John Hartson. He's, he's, and also, do you think if Wimbledon do go down, do you think... He will leave. Well, he, he was um, nearly on his way to Spurs, wasn't he? What and he's failed a, a failed a fitness test. And what do you think the problem is at Wimbledon? What do you think? I just, I mean, why do you think the Wimbledon it. formula has broken out? Have they lost that kind of the crazy gang spirit, or is it, is it old? I mean, I've played against them loads of times, and when they need to, they pull out results. <laughs> but at the moment, that was a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eagle Olsen is there. Hello. He's the Wimbledon manager, and he's just having a torrid time. Look at his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> 